Hello and welcome all of you, the children. Very happy to see you all again and very, very also happy also to be able to embark on a totally new chapter as we had started out the last time around. So once again, to bring everyone up to speed in the first phase, what we focused on was character building and communication skills where Professor Vishal Gupta and Professor Asha Paul interacted with you. And in the second phase of the program, we've been looking at entrepreneurship in which in the last session, you had Professor Amit Karna visiting and talking about design thinking skills and the ability to be able to conceptualize an idea, find an opportunity and be able to kind of develop it rightfully, right? Today we have Professor uh, Naman Desai with us. He is a senior professor at IIM Ahmedabad, professor of finance and accounting. And he is going to be talking through these two sessions, the session of today and the session next week around the same time, when we are going to be talking about the issue of scaling your entrepreneurial venture, which is where we hope to learn from him the basics of accounting, of pricing, of finance and related issues. So I would request Professor Naman Desai and I think he will also be doing a very interesting exercise with you to kindly take over and uh, uh, welcome Professor Desai. Uh, thank you Piyush for the introduction. Um, so I think we can start without much uh, beating around the bush, right? So uh, almost everyone is here. So good afternoon to everyone and to all the students and the teachers. So today, um, see my focus is going to be on uh, creating an awareness about uh, financial accounting and the financial reporting process of companies, okay? So we are going to uh, do uh, some basic exercises uh, where I teach you how to prepare the uh, financial statements of a company and give you some idea of how companies uh, interact with their uh, shareholders and other stakeholders, okay? So, uh, you know, typically when we think about uh, the uh, accounting field, can they, people can hear me, right? Clear? No? Yes, we can. Okay. So, normally when we think about accounting, uh, people think about debits and credits, uh, people think about uh, large financial reports uh, with a lot of financial information thrown in it and so on, okay? But accounting is not as complicated as it is made out to be, all right? Accounting is not as complicated as it is made out to be. Before I talk about how to prepare these accounting reports, first let us understand why, what is the purpose uh, of accounting, okay? See, remember, the company is a distinct and separate entity from its owners, okay? So the management of the company, the owners of the company, and the company itself are separate entities, okay? Uh, so it's like, you know, uh, and the company is, uh, you can say that it is an artificial legal entity, okay? It is an artificial legal entity. Uh, entity uh, with which needs to con on a regular basis communicate with its uh, various stakeholders. Okay, who are the typical people associated with a company? If you think about the stakeholders of a company, uh, you know you have the customers, you have the employees, uh, you have the uh, uh, the financial institutions like banks which uh, give loans to the company. And then you have the shareholders of the company, okay? You have the shareholders of the company, right? So these are the typical uh, stakeholders of any company. And the company has to communicate with these stakeholders on a regular basis, okay? The company has to keep these stakeholders informed about what it is doing, how much profit it is making, how much revenues or sales it is generating, how many, how many, how much expenses are being generated and so on, right? Now, you know, if uh, we are communicating, we use the language, we use English, we use Hindi, right? And talk with each other. The company cannot use English or Hindi to talk with its stakeholders. And so the company uses the language of accounting, okay? So the company uses the language of 
uh, accounting. And today, I am going to take a very, very simplified approach to give you some idea of how this language of accounting works. Okay, to give you some idea of how this language of accounting uh, works. Now, let me share my screen with you. So today, we are going to talk about. Uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, you know, if you think about a typical company, the company will have, uh, it will generate some money for its business, okay? And uh, that money will be invested uh, in the form of some uh, assets that the companies own, okay? So rather than looking at the more traditional income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, we are going to understand the company's transactions in very, very simple English, okay, fine. Now, if I want to start a company, typically what is the first thing that I need to do? The first thing that I need to do is bring in money to start my operations, okay? The first thing that I need to do is bring in money to start my operations. And so if I look at this accounting equation over here, which is the assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. And under the owner's equity, there are two sources of funds. Uh, one from the day-to-day -day operations of the company, which is the revenues and the expenses. Revenues are sales, expenses are what you pay to your employers, suppliers, and so on. And one is through the capital that is, uh, or the initial money that is invested in the company by the uh, owners of the company. Okay, so if you think about this accounting equation, the right hand side is all the sources of money for the company, and the left hand side is where the money is invested. Okay, so right hand side are all the sources of the money, and left hand side is where all the money remains invested in the company. So if you think about, uh, you know, the first step that is necessary to get my business running, the owners have to bring in money to the company, right? So if I am a partnership or a sole proprietorship, okay, uh, I'm not a big company. Uh, me and my friend have started a company or I have started my small own company. Uh, I am going to put in some cash into the company's bank account and it is going to, on the other side, it is going to show up as contributed capital. Okay. CC is your contributed capital. CC is contributed capital. And you can see I have explained each transaction uh, below in the, in the write-up associated with each of these transactions. Okay. So I start the business. Cash comes in through its owners. Uh, and the assets are on the asset side, cash goes up. And on the other side, the contributed capital also goes up. Now, if I'm a big company with many shareholders, then the same process is going to uh, look like this. Cash comes in and rather than contributed capital, I'm going to say my share capital is increased. Okay, rather than contributed capital, my share capital. So the company issues shares to the public. Okay, so the company says that, look, I am selling ownership, my ownership in the company. Uh, you give me money and you can become my owners. That is what is happening in the second transaction. Okay. So the company issues shares, the public pay uh, the company cash to purchase those shares and they become owners of the company. Okay. So remember, your, the owners of a company are the shareholders of the company. Okay. Fine. But remember, the company is a separate legal entity compared to the shareholders of the uh, company. Okay, fine. So I can, if I am a small company, I am going to bring in cash and it is going to affect my contributed capital. If I am a big company, I'm going to bring in cash and it is going to show up as share capital. It is going to show up as share capital. Okay, so this, these are the first initial transactions that are necessary to get my business running. Then the next thing that could happen is that I'm going to start selling. I, okay, I want to record how to, I want to learn how to record my sales. Okay, I want to record my, I, love, I want to learn how to record my sales, fine. So under this revenue expense column, 
you know, I am going to have a plus revenues or sales. And um, again, when I sell things, I'm going to get some cash. So plus cash on the asset side when goods are sold for cash, plus revenues under the revenue expense uh, cost. Okay. Now, when the company is doing its business and communicating with the stakeholders, the company needs to communicate all information to the stakeholders, irrespective of whether cash has been received or paid. Okay, so irrespective of whether cash has been received or paid, I have to communicate all information to the stakeholders. Okay, so sometimes what happens is that I'm going to sell goods to my customers and I will get, get cash immediately. But in other cases, it might happen that I might sell goods to my customers and I will not get cash immediately, okay? But I will get the right to collect cash sometime in the future, okay? I will get the right to collect cash sometime in the future. So plus revenues, plus accounts receivables when goods are sold on credit, okay? So let us say you are running a small business, okay? And uh, two of your friends come to buy uh, some goods from you, okay? One friend says that, look, I have enough money today to pay off the pay off for the goods that are purchased from your business. So it is going to be plus cash, plus revenues. Your other friend is going to say that, look, uh, you know, I'm a little bit short of cash, short on cash today. I don't have enough money to pay for the goods that I am purchasing from you today. However, I'll pay you after 20 days, okay? I'll pay you after 20 days. So even if the friend is going to pay after 20 days, you are still going to record sales. But instead of cash, you are going to record an accounts receivable. Okay. This is your right. This is your right to collect cash from your friend after 20 days. Okay. Your right to collect cash from your friends after 20 days. Right. So this is what I mean by uh, the uh, accounts receivables portion under your asset side, okay? Now, after 20 days, your friend says, okay, now I have enough money to pay you off, okay? So you give up the right to collect the cash and you collect cash from your friend. So minus accounts receivables plus cash when we collect our accounts receivables, right? When we collect our accounts receivables, right? So now, if you look at this, we have now learned how to record the infusion of cash into our company. We know how to record uh, revenues that our company makes during its lifetime. We also know how to collect uh, credit sales from our customers who do not pay up immediately, but will pay up after a few months or a few days. Okay, right? So these are all the transactions associated with raising of capital and raising of and, and recording of revenues. The next set of transactions, you know, we are a big company, we are going to purchase things, we are going to use things in our business and so on, right? So the next set of transactions, we are going to learn how to record the purchase of goods in our company, okay? Remember one thing, uh, the act of purchasing goods in your company does not create an expense, okay? When you purchase goods in your company, you do not create an expense. So, uh, you know, let us say you purchase goods for cash. Uh, cash goes out from your pocket and against that you will get some inventory or goods that you have purchased, okay? We'll call that inventory, okay? Uh, we'll call that inventory, okay? So minus cash plus inventory when we purchase goods for cash, right? Now, remember, uh, in this transaction, you accommodated a customer who did not have money to pay you immediately, right? But you still sold goods to him or her, and then you collected the money after some time, right? Now, just as you accommodate customers who do not have money, uh, your suppliers from whom you buy goods might also accommodate you, okay? So they say, okay, you go to the supplier and tell him that, look, 
I need five kgs of uh, material X today, but I don't have money to pay you off immediately. So the supplier says, okay, you know, I know your business. You are a decent guy. I know you will pay up eventually. So you will purchase the inventory, but since you are not paying them off, you will create something called a liability. You will create something called a liability. Okay. So you are liable to pay, uh, pay off the supplier sometime in the future. So it's called an accounts payable. So when we purchase goods on credit. Okay. Fine. The next thing, now, you know, remember, we have taken credit from our supplier. We have to eventually pay him off, right? We have to pay off cash. So when we pay off the suppliers for the goods that were purchased in the past, cash will go out and our liability will also be reduced, right? Cash will go out and our liability will also be reduced, right? So, fine. All right. So now we know how to record the infusion of cash in our business, how to record sales. We know how to record credit sales and then the collection of cash subsequently. We know how to record uh, the purchase of uh, goods in, an, in our business and how to purchase such things on credit and eventually pay them off later. Right? So these are some of the basic day-to-day -day transactions that your company conducts uh, on a reg conducts regularly. Right? Now, as I told you, the act of purchasing inventory does not create uh, an expense or the act of purchasing anything in your company does not create an expense. The act of utilizing goods and services in your company creates an expense. So when the inventory that you purchased is used up in your company, it becomes an expense under the revenue expense column. Okay, it becomes an expense under the revenue expense column, which is your cost of goods sold, right? So minus inventory minus cost of goods sold, right? Minus inventory minus cost of goods sold, okay? Then you know we learn how to pay off for pay our salaries. Uh, you know we have employees working for us, so we have to pay their salaries, right? So when we pay any expense, cash will go out from our company, and an expense will be created on our revenue expense column. Okay. Remember, pluses are inflows or increases in any balance. Minuses are decreases in any balance. Okay. Pluses are increases in any balance. Minuses are decreases in any balance. Fine. So this is when we pay for our expense. Then uh, sometimes it happens that we don't have sufficient cash to pay off our expenses. So, you know, cash will not go out. So this is when expense is due, but we still haven't paid it. Okay. So expense will increase and a liability will be created liability will be created plus expense payable okay plus expense payable okay expense is due but we still haven't paid it now another source of raising money for the company is borrowing from the bank okay so you know money can come in from two sources one is the owner puts in money into the company and second is i borrow money from the Okay. So when I borrow money from the bank, uh, cash will come into my company, so plus cash, and a liability will be created, so plus loan payable. Okay. Cash comes in, uh, and a liability is created, so a loan payable is created. Okay. Similarly, when we repay the loan to the bank, cash will go out from our company, and the loan payable will be removed. Okay. The loan payable will be now, when we borrow money from the bank, the bank is not going to give it free to us, okay? The bank is not going to give us free money. We have to pay some interest to the bank, okay? We have to pay some interest to the bank. The bank says, okay, you can use 10,000 rupees from, my, from me, 
but i will not give it free you know you have to pay 5% 2% 6% 7% interest whatever is the interest associated with the loan okay so when we pay interest on our borrowings it is an expense under the revenue expense column so minus cash when we pay interest on borrowings minus interest expense under the revenue expense right okay fine next uh, sometimes what happens is that the interest is not paid in cash interest is not paid in cash so minus interest expense plus interest payable okay minus interest expense plus interest payable when interest is due again when whenever an expense is due but we can't pay it we will create a liability okay rather than cash going out a liability will be created and eventually that liability will be paid off or settled by paying out cash okay it will eventually be settled by paying cash okay now just as we can borrow money if we have some spare cash lying around in the company we can also invest money okay just like we can borrow money we can also invest money so minus cash plus notes receivable so you know now we are effectively lending money to someone uh, and uh, we'll earn some interest on such investments or lendings okay so minus cash plus notes receivables or plus investment when we lend money or invest uh, money fine and when we re, uh, when we collect our investments uh, from the or when we call back our loans uh, cash will come in and notes receivables or investments will be settled right notes uh, receivables or investments will be settled right so when we lend money cash goes out okay and uh, you know if we if we give it to the bank it is a notes receivable we can invest in uh, shares of other company we can give money to our employees uh, in the form of any lending and so on right so cash goes out and an investment is created uh, when the investment is realized or sold off uh, cash comes back to us and that investment is reduced okay investment is reduced when we get money back uh, when we get back the money we invested or gave to now just as we have to pay interest on our borrowings remember the bank is not going to give money free to us right same way we are also not going to give money free to anyone else okay so you know when we lend money to anyone just like we pay interest on our loans or borrowings we will earn interest on our lendings we will earn interest on our lendings or investments okay so plus cash plus interest income when we receive interest on our investments okay so plus cash plus interest income when we receive interest on our investment and uh, plus interest receivable plus interest income when we are owed interest on our investment but we still haven't received okay sometimes you know when for example when you give money to the bank the bank says that i am not going to pay interest in cash to you every time okay i will keep adding the interest to your investment okay we call that compounding of interest okay so you will earn interest on your interest income also okay but since the interest income is for a particular year for which we are preparing our financial statements we will still include it in our uh, revenue or expense of that year and treat it as an interest receivable right so when we are owed interest on our investment but we still haven't received it right so this is the interest income uh finally we can also uh uh purchase uh, uh long term assets as we call them right machine property um uh, equipment land whatever right again as i said the typically when we buy these long term assets like machine property equipment 
remember we are not going to use these up in one year or two years okay uh, normally if we buy a building it is going to last us for 15 20 years if we buy a machine it is going to last us for 7 8 years right typically that is what happens depending on the type of the uh, machine right so when we purchase large assets for cash it is plus machine property plant equipment minus cash okay and sometimes it happens that we don't have money to buy these uh, large uh, value assets or large value long term assets okay so we will borrow money to purchase these assets okay we will borrow money to purchase these assets so plus machine property equipment plus loan payable when we purchase large assets on credit okay now typically in accounting we follow something called the matching principle okay what does this matching principle mean matching principle means that you know i am going to equate the cost of any particular asset with the benefit that i get from the utilization of that asset okay i am going to equate the cost of any particular asset with the benefit that i get from the utilization of that asset okay so now for example if i borrow if i buy a car for my business okay i am buying a car or a truck for my business okay and i can use that truck for 7 years in my business okay then rather than treating it as an expense in the first year in which the truck is purchased i will depreciate the value or reduce the value of the truck uh, on a equal basis over the life of the truck okay so this is what we mean by this accumulated depreciation okay just to give you a simple example let us say i am buying a truck for 100 rupees the truck can be used for 10 years okay so i will divide 100 by 10 years i will get 10 rupees and i will record a depreciation expense of 10 rupees for the 10 years for which i am utilizing this truck okay so this is what we mean by depreciation okay so we want to equate the cost of the asset with the benefits that we get from the assets and since we are going to get the benefits of the assets for 10 years which is the life of the truck i will depreciate the cost of the truck which is 100 rupees over the next 10 years rather than writing it off as an expense in the year in which the truck is purchased Fine. So this is the depreciation portion, right? So now considering another thing that happens is that sometimes a company will pay expenses in advance. Okay. Sometimes your company will pay expenses in advance. Okay. I will give you a very simple example. Um, a lot of us have uh, subscriptions for our tv okay so let us say that i am uh, uh, subscribing to a set of tv channels through tata sky or some local uh, tv channel provider okay and what happens in most cases is that if you pay the entire year subscription in advance you will get a very good deal okay if you pay the entire a uh, year subscription in advance you would get a very good deal so on the for, let us say that you are getting this subscription for one year uh, beginning on 1st january and uh, the subscription is from 1st january to 31st december okay and the uh, tv channel provider tells you that look if you uh, pay the entire year's uh, subscription in advance i will give you a 20% discount okay i'll give you a 20% discount so you decide that yes i will pay off the entire year subscription in the first year itself okay so on 1st january what has happened is that you have paid for the subscription for the entire following year but you still haven't received any benefit from that expense okay you still haven't received any benefit from that expense okay so cash will go out of your pocket and 
you will record it as a prepaid expense okay you will record it as a short term asset because you have the right to enjoy the benefits of this payment over the next 12 months then by the end of the year you have used the entire year's subscription so on 31st december you will no longer treat it as a prepaid expense and you will treat it as a normal expense okay and this happens regularly with most companies okay normally most companies will prepay for expenses they might receive advances for revenues and so on right so when you prepay expenses uh, you know money is leaving your pocket you are not getting any benefit so you create this asset this is the right to enjoy some services for the next 12 months okay and then at the end of the 12 months uh once you have enjoyed the services of those expenses you will no longer treat them as prepaid and you will treat them as whatever subscription expense salary expense whatever you want to call it okay the next thing now just as you can uh pay your expenses in advance you can also receive cash from your customers in advance okay now sticking to our uh, uh to our channel provider example okay now the channel provider on the first day of the year has received the entire year subscription for from you okay so cash has come into his books okay but on that first day he has still not provided any services to you okay on that first day of the year he has still not provided any services to you so plus cash plus earned revenue when we receive revenues in advance of providing service right plus cash plus earned revenue when we receive revenues in advance of providing service okay and then why is this a liability because the channel provider is liable to provide these services to you over the next 12 months then at the end of the year once the services have been provided okay at the end of the year once the services have been provided this unearned revenue will be removed and it will now be treated as your normal uh service okay it will be treated as normal service okay fine uh so this is how uh, these are the typical transactions that a company uh, does on a regular basis during its normal operations okay it buys goods it's it sells goods uh it buys property plant and equipment it borrows money it lends money uh it receives uh, money in advance it pays for expenses in advance okay and what we have done now is that using simple english plus minus right i we have learned how to record these transactions in what we call this accounting equation okay now remember at the end of every transaction the accounting equation has to match okay the left hand side and the right hand side should be equal okay at the end of every transaction the left hand side and the right hand side are going to be the same now a lot of you might say that uh, you know you have heard of this thing called debits credits when it comes to accounting the first thing that comes to mind is debits and credits and so on okay journal entries and so on now if you want to convert this simple english transactions to debits and credits you just have to follow the rules of the accounting language okay just as english has rules of grammar the language of accounting also has its own grammar okay so to convert these simple english trans english explanations into debits and credits you just follow these rules on the asset side all pluses are debit and all minuses are credits on the liability revenue expense and owners equity side uh, all pluses are credit and all minuses are debit okay normally when we think about this intuitively people say that debits are bad and credits are good no there is no such thing like that okay there is no such thing like that debits and credits are just a way to ensure that this 
accounting equation matches at the end of each transaction and to ensure that the debits and credits of each transaction are the same okay the total of the debits and credits for any particular transaction is the same okay right so this is as i said you know we are just using simple english and there is nothing beyond this that the company does on a day to day basis okay this list of generic transactions that we covered uh, includes all typical day to day transactions of any company uh, whether it is a small uh, partnership or a multinational company the day to day transactions remain the same okay the day to day transactions the same right and this simple english can be converted to debits and credits using these simple rules of account using these simple rules of account okay so now what we want to do is that i have sent out a bunch of transactions uh, we will uh, learn how to record these things using some numbers okay using some numbers okay fine and uh, we will not complete there are a couple of transactions that are a little bit uh, more complicated than necessary so uh, we'll see we can skip some of them uh, as we go along uh, let's see now so this is that list of transaction that was sent out to people okay so i'm running a company and uh, i want to uh these are some transactions these are 15 transactions that the company uh entered into during its first year of operations and based on these transactions i want to create the i want to calculate a profit i want to calculate the profit and loss of the company and i want to calculate the uh, create the balance sheet of the company which will tell me which will give me some information about the financial position of the overall financial position of the company okay so let's uh, look at these fine if you look at that first transaction it says that the company borrowed 400000 rupees from a bank on june 30th okay so in this for our first year of business on june 30th uh, 2008 because remember we are preparing the financial statements from january 1st to december 30 first 2008 okay uh, i am borrowing some money so on june 30th the company gets cash into its books worth 4 400000 and some liabilities are created and we now want to show to our stakeholders that we owe 400000 in loans to our bank okay so on june 30th uh, the liability is created okay and cash comes into the then this bank has an interest of 10% okay the loan has an interest of 10% so in this year remember i borrowed the money on june 30th so now uh, i therefore in the current year i have used this loan for 6 months right july august september october and november remember the money was borrowed on june 30th so june is done okay but we have to pay interest we have used this loan in the current year for 6 months okay and so i have to charge interest for those 6 uh, months and so that interest is going to be calculated like this my loan is 400000 uh interest rate is 10% and in the current year i use the loan for 6 out of 12 months okay and so this is going to be my interest expense associated with my borrowings in the current year and since the interest was not paid a liability will be created and we'll call it interest payable okay we'll have to pay this interests off sometime in the future we'll pay off this interest sometime in the future. the next transaction 
is now instead of borrowing money, I am investing money. So I am investing money on March 1st in a certificate of deposit. Okay. So basically, I am uh, investing money in a bank. Okay. Uh, in a certificate of deposit. Okay. Or fixed deposit, as we call it. Okay. I am investing 50,000 rupees because I don't need it. Okay. Yeah, there is some spare money in my business. I don't need that money. And so I am investing it and I am going to earn an interest of 12%. Okay. So on March 1st, cash goes out. Okay. And an investment is created. So minus 50,000 cash plus 50,000 certificate of deposit. Okay. Now, in the current year, since the money was invested on March 1st, I am, uh, I am going to earn an interest for 10 months. Okay, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. I am going to make interest, I am going to earn interest for uh, 10 months. Okay, so the total investment is going to be 50,000, the interest rate is 12% and in the current year, my money remain invested with the bank for 10 months because remember, I made this investment on 1st March, right? So 10 over 12 and so this is going to be my interest receivable and this is going to be my interest. Okay, fine. All right. So now we know how to record borrowings and interest, and we know how to record investments and the associated interest income part. Okay. The next transaction is I received 50,000 in advance on September 30th for services to be performed over the next 12 months. Okay. So on September 30th, I am receiving some cash from my customers, okay? And all of this is advance payment for services to be performed over the next 12 months, okay? So on 30th September, I have received the money, but I have not provided any service. And so this is an unearned revenue. I am liable to provide these services sometime in the future, okay? Then by the end of the year, uh, remember, the services were to be provided for the next 12 months, right? So by, for the, by the end of the year, I have provided services for 3 out of the 12 months. And so though that amount is no longer unearned and I will treat it as my normal revenue under the revenue expense. So minus 12,500 earned on revenue plus 12,500 uh, revenues, okay? So uh, I receive money in advance from my customer. On the date of receiving the cash, I have not provided any service. So I record the receipt of the cash, but I'm going to not treat it as revenue because I can treat something as revenue only if I provide the uh, goods and services. Now, the services are to be provided over the next 12 months. And so uh, I will treat this uh, as revenue piecemeal uh, as and when the services are provided. And so by the end of the year, which is 31st December, uh, I have provided three out of 12 months worth of services. So that is no longer unearned and it will be treated as revenue. The next transaction, I paid 24,000 in advance for renting a new building on April 1st. Okay, so now I need a building for my business and uh, to get a good price on the rent, I am paying everything in advance. Okay, now on April 1st, the cash has gone out of my pocket. Okay, the cash has gone out of my pocket, but I still haven't received any benefit of paying this rent. Okay. I have not received any benefit for paying this rent. Okay. Fine. And this rent is for the next 12 months starting on April 1st. Okay. Now, by the end of the year, 
I have enjoyed the benefit of this rent for nine months out of the 12 months for which it was paid, right? So as and when I enjoy the benefit of the expense, it will be not treated as prepaid and it will be treated as a rent expense. So how did I get this amount? It is going to be, remember, 24,000 times uh, 9 over. That is no longer uh, prepaid. It is going to be my rent expense. It is going to be my rent expense. Let us repeat these two transactions again. So number five, I received uh, uh, 72,000 in advance on June 1st for services to be provided over the next 24 months, okay? I am receiving 72,000 in advance on June 1st for services to be provided over the next 24 months. Fine, so on June 1st, I have received the cash but I still haven't received any benefit. I still haven't provided any services to my customers, right? My customers are prepaying me for the next 24 months, next 24 months. Now, by the end of the current year, I am providing seven months worth of services out of the 24 months for which the cash was received in advance. So that portion is going to be no longer earned and it becomes plus 21,000 revenues. Plus 21,000 revenues, okay? So 72,000 cash, 72,000 earned revenue. Uh, by the end of the uh, uh, year, I have provided services for seven out of the 24 months for which this money was received. So that is no longer earned. I am no longer liable to uh, provide those services and I will treat it as my normal revenues. Okay. Then I paid 36,000 rupees in advance on March 31st for renting a factory building for two years. Okay, renting a factory building for two years. So on March 31st, I am prepaying the cash. Cash is leaving my pocket, okay? But I still haven't received any benefit of this spending, and so it is going to be a prepaid rent. It is going to be a prepaid rent. By the end of the year, I have enjoyed the benefits for nine of the 24 months for which the money was prepaid. So that portion... Oops. That portion is no longer prepaid rent and I will treat it as rent expense. Sorry, not nine out of 12, but nine out of 20. Okay, so first March money leaves my pocket. Okay, by the end of the year and this money is advance payment for the next 24 months. Okay, by the end of the year, I have enjoyed the benefits of this expense for nine out of the 24 months. So that portion is no longer prepaid and I will treat it as rent expense. I will treat it as rent expense. Then uh, I purchased some goods costing 5 lakhs for cash. The purchased uh, good uh, and uh, total of 100 lakhs are on account. Okay, So I am not paying cash immediately for that 1 lakh worth of purchases. So I am buying goods worth 6 lakhs, so it's my inventory. When I buy goods, it is added to something called my inventory. Okay. Out of that, I pay cash for 5 lakhs, and the rest is an accounts payable. I am liable to pay this 1 lakh sometime in the future. I am liable to pay this amount sometime in the future. Right? So you can see, now we know how to record the purchase of goods in our business okay we purchase goods worth six lakhs five lakhs was paid in cash the rest is a liability which i will have to pay off sometime in the future right 
Then I sold goods costing four lakhs for five lakh sixty thousand rupees. Okay. So there are two transactions over here. One is the recording of the sale. My sale was five lakh sixty thousand or five hundred and sixty thousand. So revenues are five sixty. Cash is five sixty. And second, remember the sale cannot come out of thin air. It was associated with some of the goods that were uh, sold off. So the value of those goods was four lakh. So four lakh uh, is reduced from my inventory, and it becomes cost of goods. So okay, four hundred thousand is reduced from inventory, and and it becomes cost of goods. So right. So plus five sixty cash, plus five sixty revenues, right? Minus four hundred inventory, minus four hundred cost of goods. So cost of goods, so, right? So there are two transactions over here, right? Every number is a transaction. So we can see that we made a profit of one lakh sixty thousand. Okay, we made a profit of one lakh sixty thousand. But we can't record that one lakh sixty thousand directly. We have to show each step. because remember the company wants to give a complete picture to its stakeholders okay the company wants to provide a very transparent and complete picture to its stakeholders okay <clears throat> then i gave an advance of 50000 to an employee on march 1st at an interest rate of 10% okay So now I am lending money to my employees on March first. I am cash is going out and an advance to employee is created. Okay, so on my asset side, cash goes out and advance to employee is created on March first. Okay, now the interest on this is ten percent, and since the money was uh, lent for ten months in the current year, March first to December thirty first. i will have to i will have to charge interest of 4167 the interest income is 4167 so plus 4167 interest income plus 4167 interest received okay because in the current year the employee borrowed the money for 10 months right march 1st to 31st december so the current in the current year the interest that we should earn is 4167 and since the interest was not yet paid in cash we will assume that it is an interest receivable which we will collect sometime in the future which we will collect sometime in the future all right next we sold certain goods for 1 lakh 20000 on account the cost of the goods was 80000 again these are two transactions one we will record the sale remember the goods are sold on account so plus 1 lakh 20 revenues plus 1 lakh 20 accounts receivables okay the goods are sold on credit okay so i am selling the goods but the customer is going to pay off sometime in the future So plus one twenty revenues plus one twenty accounts receivable, and against that sale, the sale was created by this inventory, right? So inventory goes out of my business minus eighty thousand inventory, and remember when I use up the inventory in my business, it becomes an expense. So minus eighty thousand cost of goods, so minus eighty thousand cost of goods. So fine. so we have now learned how to record expenses sales cash sales credit sales all of these transactions are included uh finally i am collecting accounts receivables worth 1 lakh okay so remember my customers owe me some money right my customers owe me some money right here so i am collecting 1 lakh of those accounts receivables so minus 1 lakh accounts receivables Plus one lakh cash. So the customer pays me the money. So now I don't have the right to collect that one lakh. It has been converted to cash. Minus one lakh accounts receivable plus one lakh cash. And I am also paying off my suppliers. Remember, I owe some money to the suppliers over here, right? Accounts payables were one lakh. Out of that one lakh, I am paying off eighty thousand. Okay. 
So minus eighty thousand cash, minus eighty thousand accounts payable. It's right here. Minus eighty thousand cash, minus eighty thousand accounts payable. Right? Minus eighty thousand cash, minus eighty thousand accounts payable. Okay. Right. So we have collected money from our customers, which the customer owed to us, and we have also paid off some money that was due to our suppliers. Okay, we have paid off some money that we that was due to our suppliers. Now they say that owners of the company invested fifty thousand in the company. Okay, fine. So now contributed capital is coming in. So plus fifty thousand cash comes into the company, and it comes under this. owners equity column which is the uh, under the owners equity contributed capital column right so plus 50000 contributed capital okay plus 50000 contributed capital and then the company is paying some dividends of 10000 rupees dividends means it is paying some money back to its owners okay sometimes see the company what happens is that the companies that make good profits they uh return some money to their owners and that is called dividends okay so the dividends are not expenses they will not come under the revenue expense column they will not come under this revenue expense column but they will be re reduce the, re they will reduce the contributed capital of the owner okay so plus 50000 cash plus 50000 contributed capital And some dividend is paid, so minus one thousand dividends. Minus, sorry, minus ten thousand dividends. Minus ten thousand cash. Okay, dividends are not expenses; they are uh, distribution of uh, uh, owner's equity to the owners of the company. Now, uh, this was one form of cash infusion. The second form of cash infusion is going to be. the issuance of common shares okay so now this company has become pretty big it is issuing 20000 shares to the public okay it is issuing 20000 shares to the public the face value of the share was 10 rupees okay the company's initial price was 10 rupees but because the company is considered to be very good the market price of the shares is 45 rupees okay because the company is considered to be very good the market price of the shares is supposed to be 45 rupees fine so total 900000 flows 9 lakh come into the books of the company uh, 20000 shares times 45 and uh, i want to show to my stakeholders that look i i was able to sell at a much higher price than the face value of the shares so This ninety thousand is divided in two accounts. The first one, the face value goes to the share capital account. So twenty thousand times ten, and the difference between the face value and the market value goes into something called the share premium account. Okay, it goes into something called the share premium right so total cash collected by the company was 9 lakhs out of that 2 lakhs which is the face value of the share goes to the share capital account and the difference between the face value and the uh, market price of uh, 45 goes to the share premium account right again again the company wants to show a true and fair view of its financial position right the stakeholders want to know what was the face value of the shares issued what was the share premium earned and so on. okay finally the company paid a cash dividend of 2000 rupees okay so cash dividend so again it is a distribution of owners uh, 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 equity right so minus 2000 dividends minus 2000 cash minus 2000 dividends minus 2000 and our last transaction is on april 1st the company purchased a machine worth 3 lakh rupees okay this is a uh, slightly over complicated 
uh, not a basic uh, transaction, slightly more complicated transaction, but that's okay. We'll look into it. I'll try to explain as best as I can. Okay. The value of the machine was 3 lakhs. Uh, it paid 2 lakhs in cash and the rest was through a bank loan. Okay. So I am buying a machine for 3 lakhs. 2 lakhs I pay in cash and the rest is I'm being borrowed from the bank. Okay. I'm borrowing the money from the bank. This was on April 1st. The total was April 1st. Now, since I borrowed, used, uh, since I, sorry, purchased this machine on April 1st, and remember the machine had a useful life of 10 years, okay? So the depreciation on the machine is going to be 300,000 divided by 10 years. And in the current year, I have used the machine for nine months out of 12. So this is going to be the depreciation expense associated with this machine, right? I have to write off 30,000 rupees each year as depreciation. But in the current year, since I have used it for only nine months out of 12, remember the machine was purchased on April 1st, I will only charge nine months depreciation. Similarly, since I borrowed money, remember the loan had an interest rate of 10%. Okay? I also have to charge some interest expense. The interest on the loan should be 1 lakh times 10%. But again, since the loan was borrowed on April 1st, I will use it and I've used it for only 9 out of the 12 months in the current year. The interest expense is going to be 7500. And since the interest was not yet paid, I will treat it as a liability, which will be paid off in the future. Since the interest was not yet paid, I will treat it as a liability, which will be paid off in the future. Okay. Now, uh, getting from the accounting equation to debit credit, credit is easy. Remember, we just have to follow the rules, but we can also very quickly create the income statement and balance sheet. Okay. So to create the income statement, this revenue expense column is nothing but your income statement for the year. You add up the revenue expense column and you get the net income for the year. So this company made a net income of uh, 1,61,167 rupees. Okay. Then if I want to calculate the cash flow position of the company, I just look into the asset column. I look into the asset column and add up everything with the heading cash. Okay. Add up everything with the heading cash and I will get the cash flow associated with this company. Okay. So I have prepared a more formal cash balance, but the method is the same. You just add up everything with the heading cash under the asset side. And now you have the cash flow statement of the company. The income statement, you just add up the revenue expense column and you have the net income of the company. Okay. So cash flow statement and income statement are done. Uh, then out of this income, you deduct whatever dividends are paid. Remember, there are two dividends paid, 10,000 and 2,000. And the balance is your retained earnings that is reinvested in the company. Right. Out of this net income, you pay off the dividends and balance is the retained earnings that is reinvested in the company. Okay. And finally, if I want to make the balance sheet, I just add the cash balance over here. And then from this asset side, everything without the word cash is put under the asset side of the balance sheet. Then under the liability column, all the items that show up in the liability column are put under the liability section of the balance sheet. Okay. And then under owner's equity, whatever I have except dividends is put under the owner's equity section of the balance sheet. Right. And you can see that my balance sheet is going to match. Assets are equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Right. Liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay. So if you pick up an accounting textbook, the accounting textbook will go on and on and talk about this in a very complicated way. But as I said, using simple English, first you can record the transactions and then using the rules of debit credit. So for example, if you want to write the journal entry over here, 
This is plus 400, uh, 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 4 lakh cash debit, 4 lakh loans credit. Okay, because we know the rules. On the asset side, pluses are debits, minuses are credits. On the liability revenue expense and owner's equity side, pluses are credits and minuses are debits. Right? So knowing the rules, you can easily convert these numbers, simple English numbers into debits and credits. And then following my system, you can calculate the net income, cash balance, and the balance sheet of the company. Okay. In fact, I will send you detailed charts of how this works. I will also send you a flow chart of this process. Okay. So with this, uh, I'm going to stop today and we'll see how, what is the feedback and then we will uh, sort of plan our next Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope you found this to be an interesting session. Uh, we will stop here and uh, have our next session in about a week's time.